First, the Trudeau government has reached its revised target of bringing 20,000, make that 10,000, Syrian refugees to Canada. We have now demonstrated, I think, an ability to get the machine up and to deliver the refugees to Canada. The next phase, and it won't be easy, it won't always be totally smooth, is to welcome all of these uh, individuals to Canada. Immigration Minister John McCallum says he's confident 25,000 refugees will be welcomed to Canada by the end of February. That's two months shy of the Liberal Party's election pledge to bring in 25,000 by the end of 2015. Aras Bagrikian is a retired citizen ju citizenship judge who is sponsoring several refugee families. He joins us now in studio. Mr. Bagrikian, it's good to see you once again. Nice to see you again. What came Brad. to your mind when you learn this 10,000 threshold had been reached? Well, it was great news that we were able to bring 10,000 refugees. But the issue is that we should step away from this uh, vicious circle of uh, numbers and deadlines. Because the most important thing is who are the, we are bringing, how we are bringing them, and how we are settling them. That's the most important thing. We need to slow down a little bit bring these people and host them or resettle them in Canada in a dignified manner. All these three uh, who's which I raised, there are questions about them. So the issue is this, yes, we are quite generous, as you mentioned earlier, the Canadians, I have to say that they were overwhelmingly generous and they opened their hearts and minds to the refugees. They helped them. I'm receiving hundreds of phone calls every day from people saying we would like to help. You but have first-hand knowledge of uh, the difficulties, the challenges that many refugee families face as they enter Canada because you and your family are sp sponsoring three families and then other Syrian refugees that you're sponsoring uh, through extended family and friends. That's true. And uh, for the last uh, three months, and even uh, over the holidays, uh, we were quite busy, myself and many of our, my friends, to uh, try to help these people, the newcomers, to uh, resettle in Canada, to ease the challenges they are facing. We should remember that the overwhelming majority of these 10,000 people are privately sponsored refugees. They do not get any kind of assistance from the government. So it is left on the communities, the sponsorship agreement holders, the families and the friends, and the resettlement groups in Canada to try to uh, accommodate these people and it's not an easy task when for a small community like the Armenian community you receive seven to eight hundred refugees in one month you you it's overwhelming mm -hmm. and that's why that's why I'm saying that we need to step away from this uh, number and the deadline issue and we need to bring these people in a way that it will be a dignified resettlement do you believe that that's being done now to be honest with you, I don't think it, it, is, it has been done uh, by now because uh, it is nice uh, to bring uh, the refugees to the airport lounges and uh, give them parkas and uh, boots, etc. But what's after? What's the next day? Who's going to look after their needs? Uh, housing. Uh, there are many problems with housing. Many of the landlords are gouging these poor refugees. They are uh, asking them to pay one year advance rent uh, for uh, their apartments. They need jobs. They, schooling. They, 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 there is a huge problem now in Toronto. The Catholic school board, they don't have enough uh, spaces to take these children. Uh, the public school, we're struggling. We're trying to work with the public school, but also they have their own limits. Some, many of the schools, they have also reached capacity. Uh, again, furniture, housing, uh, mattresses, beds, uh, kitchen stuff. So there are many issues. And the most importantly, Brad, there are many medical issues. There are many people with physical injuries from the war. Uh, there are people who have lost their legs. They need prosthetics. There are people who have, uh, uh, there are shrapnel wounds in their spines. And it's not only that, but also most of these people are suffering from post-traumatic syndrome. And uh, just uh, closing the door a little bit strongly, uh, suddenly these people, they jump from their 
uh, seats. So there are many challenges, and that's why we need to uh, provide the mechanism. Imagine if the privately sponsored refugees, which they have friends and family members, and they have a community support, faith-based support, ethnically based support, to help them to integrate into Canada, they are suffering and they are struggling. How are we going to handle the 15,000 refugees who are coming on the government sponsorship uh, plan? Because it's not enough to bring these people and put them in military barracks or decommissioned hospitals. These people, they need adjustment. They need uh, cultural integration, orientation. So these are all tasks that we are having difficulty meeting. I hope we get another opportunity to speak about these difficulties, challenges, and uh, just the fact that we do have, as you mentioned, another uh, 15,000 Syrian refugees that we hope to welcome to Canada by the end of February. Ars Babikian, uh, retired citizenship judge, uh, who is sponsoring several refugees' families, we wish you the best and thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you very much, but pleasure.